Next, we got this. This is a random one. This is about Lana Del Rey. So Lana Del Rey, during Coachella, decided to blast one of her ex-road managers, which was a bit bizarre, to be completely honest. I'm not going to lie. At the time, I remember seeing it, and I was a bit perturbed as to why did she decide to bring this on to the big stage of Coachella. But I guess because of the performance and because of the entrance, and I guess on her side, she's basically assume, she's basically suggesting that the manager quit because they didn't agree with the new design and artistic direction Lana Del Rey wanted to go on. So let me just tell you what it was. So um, Lana Del Rey has some trust words for her former tour manager. On April 19th, the video game singer 38 shared a lengthy Instagram post expressing gratitude for everyone who made her 2024 Coachella performance so memorable. She says, thank you for fucking everything. Um, Jack and Jill, Jack, sorry, Jack and John, Billy for showing up for me and the band for just killing it and spending months on site on Sailma in 40 degree warehouse to the point that it was so cold that I caught laryngitis that literally just left a few hours before I hit the stage because Tessa de Pietro spent two hours lifting that cough remotely through her body intuitive skills just minutes before the showtime. Wally Crowder for all your badass bikes, every stunning dance on stage and Alex for his beautiful choreography my stunning free singers who dance and their and sang their asses off in style and high matching boots judah and chelsea she then shifted her tone as she thanked emily referring to emily holt for taking over as tour manager duties after pete quit for no reason after 15 years appearing to shade her former manager pete abbott Del Rey alleged he was butt hurt that I got 10 comp bikes for free from Wally and decided he was more of a stage designer than a tour manager. Never got a phone call, probably never will. Still grateful for 15 years though. No worries, 37 days was more than enough time to put together an entire headline set by ourselves. No stressful at all. Way to go, Emily. You fucking killed it with grace. So, you know, while bigging up this Emily woman who's a new tour manager, she also dunked on this former one. Now, the former manager did reply, courtesy of TMZ, and it just makes me think in general, what's happened to society? Why can't we have conversations? Why can't we pick up the phone and talk to each other? Why do we have to do everything through social media? You know, it's so bizarre. Like this manager's like a nobody. He's like an in sorry, not a nobody. He's like an industry person. He's not even that front facing, I'd imagine, unless you're like super into, you know, Lana Del Rey Law, you would never know who he is. So why did she feel the need to blast him on a very big social media page? when she could have just called him and asked him hey why did you quit <laughs> you know it's not that difficult but anyway the manager did reply and he replied as follows he said um a curse of tmz hey lana i just wanted to clarify some things for my perspective it's not about the bikes or any of that i've always supported your vision and creativity the decision to step away was more about feeling like my role was changing drastically without much discussion. I love managing your tours for 15 years, but I started to feel like my input was being overlooked, especially when it came to production and stage design. I wasn't just upset about the bikes. It was more than the direction that we're heading in. I wanted to talk through these changes and how we could work together to find the best solutions, but it seemed like those conversations never happened. It's important to me to feel valued and heard in my role, and unfortunately, that wasn't the case anymore. I'm grateful for the incredible journey we had together over the years and wish you all the best for your future projects if you ever want to talk things through I'm here best Pete for Pete it's obviously good exposure because everybody knows who his, na his name and everyone knows that he was you know heavily involved in you know not only managing Lana but obviously some of her you know design and artistic stuff and she, he kind of for, for what it sounds like he was kind of like a manager and also a creative director so that's a pretty good you know look for him because everyone knows his name he's become more vocal he's become more visible but if you're Lana Del Rey surely at this at your grown age if you're 38 years old you should be able to pick up the phone and you know have a have a word but I think this speaks to a growing trend in society overall we all don't have conversations we love to subtweet we love to sub Instagram we love to maybe even text but we don't actually have grown-up conversations when we actually have a disagreement with somebody like hey i didn't like what you did that day that thing that you said the other day didn't land well with me bloody when you said mentioned the other thing what did you actually mean like we don't actually have upfront conversations that's probably why ghosting is so popular that might explain it ghosting has become so popular across the board in friendship relationships workplace educational probably people just prefer to do that because it's easier quote unquote than actually having that hard conversation with somebody looking them in the eye and saying hey 
this is why I did this, this is why I did this, or or I'm following somebody, right? Ghosting, unfollowing, blocking is much easier than just having a conversation, which is the hardest thing to do. I guess to counter that, some people would say, oh, I don't owe everybody an explanation for the things that I do. Fair. But I think if you were friends before, if you were colleagues before, yeah, you do kind of owe that person a conversation. You do. I'm sorry. You owe that person some words. You don't just owe them just like, you know, blocking their number, deleting them, refusing to speak to them or just ignoring them completely, you know, or not picking up the phone or speaking through social media. Like, come on, bro. You owe that person a bit more, especially this person who's worked with um, Lana for 15 years. That's probably 15 years of her, you know, that's basically since she started her career, essentially. Um, so you were there during the really important parts of her career. You could say you were definitely responsible for helping her get to where she is at. Obviously, her talent is the most important thing, but you definitely played a role. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely deserve a conversation. I think you definitely deserve a conversation. So it was kind of poor from Lionel Del Rey to treat a guy like that. Maybe there's more to this, you know, maybe there's more layers to this. Maybe it's not just what they're talking about. But either way, you know, it was a weird thing that I saw happening in real time. But big up Lionel Del Rey anyway. She still smashed it at Coachella. She still smashed it at Coachella. 